show, Ned, Stingery and Robbie search the river for a target more difficult than the nest full of eggs. With a seven inch mesh shark net, they're after potential breeding stock, a grown crocodile. Driven from his basking place by the sound of the outboard motor, the croc plunges into the water, but escape is cut off. His hiding place is a dead end. Dry land at one end, the net across the other. Huh? In there, there. Somewhere in that small area of water lies the croc. Wading knee deep in the murky water, with a surprising lack of concern, Robbie Breddle tries to prod and scare him towards the net. Across that and poke around this way, eh? Hey, him down. Come on, let go. Let go of the boat. Push it over. Keep. Push the boat over here. The corks bob below the surface. The croc has struck the net. Joe's haste is to preserve the croc's safety. He must be lifted to the surface before he drowns, entangled in the net. Once it would have been easy to find the crocodile's nest, though still just as dangerous to rob the eggs. But hunters have killed out the accessible crocodiles at the wide open river mouths. The remaining nests are built far back into the gulf, deep in less easily found reaches of the rivers. The expeditions are becoming longer and longer. Robbie Brettle has his supplies aboard. Stingery Barney lives off the land. Camps of flying foxes along the Gulf Rivers provide a useful sized, tasty and readily available workday meal for the expert with a spear. It's as casually easy as opening a can. A crocodile slide. This is the target of the expedition. It's not surprising that this nest has escaped hunters' attentions. Slide runs back through a wild tangle of undergrowth. Deep, murky water waits below the insecure bridge. The guarding female crocodile will have heard the outboard approach and stop. All around, the bushes and trees offer a dismaying prospect, big enough to stop any fight. Too small to climb. The crocodile has chosen well. Her wallowing pool is evidence of her size. But the prize is worth the risk. A whole mess undamaged by the cyclone. Robbie and Stingery gamble their safety on a guess. They hope the crocodile's well-ingrained fear of man will keep her clear, hold back her protective instinct long enough for the eggs to be gathered from her nest. Each egg is transferred to a carefully prepared bed in a polystyrene box, shaded from the direct light of the sun. undergrowth. The crushing humidity of the gulf in the wet is intensified. 
the eggs must be handled gently, even though safety demands that Stingery and Robbie stay as short a time as possible near the nest. Bumping or handling the eggs roughly may cause them to hatch prematurely, and premature crocodiles have a poor survival rate. Even the shock of opening the nest during the hottest part of the day may cause the eggs to hatch too soon. The retreat is made as quickly as the clinging jungle of bushes and the safety of the packed box of eggs will allow. stacked inside the insulating box, cushioned by material removed from the nest. The eggs are taken towards the safety of the boat. Carefully, very carefully, the nest robbers pick their way across the narrow branch above the river's edge. North to Breakfast Creek. Christmas Creek, the Kendall and the Holroyd, south to Marlamont, the Coleman and Mitchell River. The search for the last nests laid by the last crocodiles widens as the wet season draws to a close. On the wide sweep of the Gulf shore, Ned Edwards hunts his midday meal. There are fish out there in the brown, muddy water of the river mouth. We were never able to see them. But his eyes and spear somehow found a barramundi or a salmon every mealtime. devastating long-term after-effect of the years of crocodile shooting. The cautious remnants of the Gulf's crocodile population now build their nests away from the man danger at river mounds. The area they were forced to choose is more prone to destructive flooding by the backed up waters of the wet. Shooting may have stopped, but the floods and natural predators continue to attack the remaining nests. The goanna has a liking for their eggs. Midway through this hot day, he attacks the concealed nest in relative safety. The mother of the clutch of eggs which he's systematically devouring will be in the river, cooling off. The goanna known in other countries as a monitor lizard, is a worldwide predator on the remaining breeding grounds of the crocodile. In Africa, he attacks the nests of the Nile crocodile. Remains of the lizard have been found among the stomach contents of crocodiles. The egg thief is sometimes caught unawares by the guarding female. Leaving the debris of his meal scattered around the now useless mound of grass and mud, the cautious goanna moves off, his appetite satisfied. The searching boat follows mile on mile of flooded riverbank. for a break in the line of grass and bush that indicates a crocodile slide. No new sights, but a man-made sign clearly indicates their goal. Joe marked this place last year, a nesting site in a good, high, water-free location.
The dinghy sweeps wide across the river before approaching the slide. The raiding party's only real protection is to let the mother crocodile know they're coming by the noise of the motor. It's a well-defined slide, obviously in frequent use. This may be the last nest in a bad season. The crocodile has built a shallow pool some distance from the nest. The site's chosen because it's in cool shade. Robbie, less cautious than the rest, wades straight through the muddy water. Joe and Ned more prudently take the hard way around, through the bushes at the side. This crocodile has built her nest back through a long stretch of grass, a safe distance from the riverbank. There's no one rule that exactly defines the location of the Australian saltwater crocodile's nesting sites. They may be right beside the bank or in dense bush, or like this nest, in relatively open grasslands. The nests are an efficient incubator regulated to within a narrow temperature range by the mother crocodile. Extremes of either heat or cold will kill the eggs. The material for the nest is gathered by the mother crocodile from the ground surrounding the site. In this case, grass and mud have been used to make the mound. The Australian saltwater crocodile's eggs remain in the incubating warmth of the nest for about 80 days after they're laid. Inside the nest, the damp mud and grass maintains a temperature between 29 and 35 degrees Celsius. A mark is made on the exposed surface of each egg before it's moved from its position in the nest. While Joe and Robbie place the eggs on the prepared bed, keeping the pencil mark in the same position, Ned keeps a watchful eye on the female crocodile slide. The nests we visited on the rivers of the Gulf contain between 40 and 60 eggs. The gulf crocodile's behaviour has been altered by shooting. The mother may not return to this nest, although its appearance remains the same. The smell of man is too strong a warning. But the eggs are in safe hands, safer than if they'd been left to nature. In a secure place beside his Edward River home, Joe Breddle reconstructs the crocodile's nest using the same materials. His whole backyard is alive with reptiles. Small crocs in pens, snakes in boxes. A snake watches the nest building from its basking place in Joe's back fence. From now until the eggs are ready to hatch, the nest will be tended. Its temperatures regulated by removing or adding layers of grass and mud. The eggs are replaced in the duplicate of the natural nest, back in their original position. The Breddle family have an affinity and affection for creatures that aren't often regarded as suitable household pets. Youngest son Peter, while sharing the family enthusiasm for reptiles like crocodiles, snakes and goannas, has his own favourite companion, a flying fox which he hand feeds with sultanas now that he's reared it past the bottle stage. <laughs>